All right, man. We're back, man. We're here in the B-Side studio. It's the Rabbit Season podcast with me, Rabbit, hosting along with my brother. Hey, and uh, we got our guest straight out of the 626 right here. Uh, we go way back. He's still doing his thing. We got Jism High Def in the building. The all Deadly Mercies, Mother Jism High Definition. What up? What up? That's right, man. Hey, uh, we got Ariel Mosley in the house as well. Chilling out with us, man. You know, yeah. we got the lounge spot in here. You know what? It's it's a uh, it's a lot cooler in here than outside. So fuck it. Uh, <laughs> it's been hot as a motherfucker in the six two six. Well, everywhere, but you know. Um, let's go back, bro. Um, you know, you've been doing your music thing for a cool minute, but you know, one thing um, that is dope to me is you know you've always repped the area. And um, something the same with me is like I I, I want to always let people know about this area yep. if they haven't heard about it. Um, but I feel like you know we're we're on the map now. But it's just something that uh, that I I always felt was important, and you've always repped that, bro. Even the, since from, wait, the from the from the giddy up, bro. <laughs> yeah. So uh, speak on that a little so bit, the, man. You know, a little origin story uh, about just some high definition. You know, I grew up in. La Puente and West Covina. And the reason I say West Covina is because I went to parties a lot when I was 15, 16, 17. And you really couldn't throw a party in La Puente. And if you did, it got broken up fast. It was <laughs> too many cholos and shootings. Uh, but yeah. if you went to West Covina, it was more peaceful. Yeah. Like, you, you know, West Covina, you could throw a party and it won't get shut down until you shut it down. But, um, so, you know, speaking on that, uh, when I was coming, uh, 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 when I speak on the origin stories, I know you're actually aware of the early, early days. So, you know, I started rapping in seventh grade and before I came up with my first name that I consider my first name, my pre name, you know, when I was in junior high school, I used to call myself Rap and Rob and I was like carving it into the table and the, the lunch rooms and so forth. And, and that's what pretty much got me going as far as figuring out that I could rhyme. I, I was memorizing Run DMC songs, and I thought I was memorizing them correct, and I would come to school and spit them to the homies at, at, at school, and they're like, nah, that ain't what they said. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, well, it should have been. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> I could do my own, you yeah, know? And yeah. then I started writing my own. They were kind of, you know, silly. You know, I was really uh, listening to Too Short and W.A., so it was a lot of cuss words, and it was, you know, you know, my, my, my first rhymes were, were pretty vulgar at that. Um, you had another moniker in between. So, yeah, the, so the that current was, that's one. why I said the pre one. Yeah, well, yeah. So before the pre one, then, then uh, at 12 years old, it, you know, when I, I thought I was coming into my own, I called myself Too Sweet. And I got that moniker from this movie that was um, called Penitentiary. It was, you know, like a, a, a 70s expectation movie. Uh -huh. And Too Sweet was a boxer that was knocking people out. He had a girlfriend named Sweet Enough. They all had crazy names. Like he had another homie named Seldom Seen that you didn't see too often. <laughs> you know, it was, it was, it was that, a pretty- That's like and, me. And, and when, when homie was throwing down, you know, he, he was basically knocking fools out. And every time, or when he was punt, fighting to get ahead, the crowd was like, kid, I'm too sweet. Go, yeah. I'm too sweet. And it, it just stuck in my head at 12 years old. Like, yo, I'm gonna be too sweet. Yo, you know? <laughs> like, like going back to what, but what you were saying, you know, um, th these are the days like you were mentioning. Those backyard parties were the shit back in the days, dog. And when, you know, us coming up in the area, that was like the dopest thing to go do. At least, at least for hip hop heads, because other other people were getting into the little clubs and sh yeah. little club scene stuff. But, you know, I, I never been into that scene so much. I, you know, every once in a while. Well, I, I've been to a couple, but uh, it's mainly like I go to hip hop shows, and then at, at in those days, it was dope. I mean, we're we're back there now, but it was dope because all the ladies would go too, dog. Exactly. So, I yeah. mean, in high school, uh, you know, when I was fifteen, sixteen years old, and and going to a house party, you, these are like was were the only places you could actually hear hip hop. Yeah. Besides on your cassettes that you bought from the record store, because there was no hip hop on the radio. The radio was still playing disco and and house music you know there wasn't there wasn't even a hip-hop radio show on the radio i think until after like yeah. in 1994 yeah you know, the, you know baker boys did friday night friday flavors, night flavors and that, and yeah. then it, wake up show before and, before that there was one bro and i well, remember there was k day no and then yeah the original k day uh, uh -huh. but on am 
There was another one on AM. And I, 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 have, I have it. I actually recorded it. Uh huh. Ninety three point three KKHR. Yeah, and <laughs> but the thing was with those stations, you know how they, you know, we didn't have the high tech stuff back then. So, yep. um, so when you tuned it in, you could it would be staticky, yep. or you you catch some lit. Because I remember trying to tune it in one time, and I heard like a, ah, oh, fuck, what was it like? something from big daddy kane dog and i was i'm a big daddy kane fan so i remember trying to hear it all pissed off like damn yeah. dog they couldn't get past it's the all, crackle it's all intermixing with like yeah. some russian station or something <laughs> here and there so. yeah in my younger years too i had a fisher price radio and i would i would actually record i was trying to get as many breakdancing songs i could record it on cassette and in between i was pretending like i was a radio dj saying you're listening to robert leon station see see when we were I, I, dog i've done the same thing bro and i i still do it on the b-side i was Still you made your own mixtapes yeah, and all that. Yeah. Recorded your own mixtapes yeah, off the radio. I, still I'm still it. practicing. Yeah, I'm still practicing my shit by doing the B side every week. You know what I mean? But yep. it's just something I've always wanted to do, and like having a platform is cool for that. And like on this show, uh, we talk a little more in depth. But dog, as hi as hip hop heads, back then we had we had a lot of work to do to go get to to be a consumer. Right. Like like whether like trying to tune into a some far off station or you know uh, when something came out. Yep. Every Tuesday we would go and you go on a mission, either get a ride or take your bike, whatever it was to, to the, you know, they used to have a lot of music stores back then for yep. those that remember the warehouse and warehouse, the, music, all that yeah, stuff. Music plus, music plus even Tower licorice records, pizza they used to have. Yeah. You know what? It was a lot of work for too. Uh, in those days were the DJs because they had to carry all their crates of records. To oh, the shit. Yeah, you know, that's not like today. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's that, crazy exercise. You just take your hard drive and your laptop and. No, but yeah, but they'd be coming in with multiple crates, though, depending how long they were spinning or or if they were trading off with someone, you they can get away with a crate or two. But um, yeah, dog, those were fun times. But yeah, as a consumer, we had you know now you could just tap on anything, go search, and you'll find whatever. You, back then, we had to it wasn't like as search. Accessible. You couldn't search yeah. with a keyboard. Yeah. You literally had to search, with drive eyes. down the street <laughs> yeah. on your bike or your skateboard, and yeah. see what what was popping at the at the spot and. Then they what, trip, what trips me out about that, I, I, just to mention, just because it was a whole different era, right? Yeah. So I used to write my rhymes and perform them at house parties. I used to have two favorite records, one of them being Funkin' Lesson by X-Clan. Oh, shit. And, and the other one was the um, Peach Fuzz uh -huh. by KMD, you know, which, and by, which ended up being um, MF Doom, uh -huh. you know. But I used to take those two records and rock to those two records. And in between that, I'd be battling because I was a battle MC from the gate. Right. So somebody somehow, I guess, recorded one of my rhymes, one of my written rhymes at a backyard house party and took my whole 16 bars, memorized it and used it in a battle against somebody else. Oh, and when he used it in that battle, somebody else taped it and came and brought it to me like, yo, you got to serve double X. Double X is doing your rhymes. I'm like, how could he do my rhymes? You know what I'm saying? Like, they put the tape on and he was spitting. Well, it. He, he did his work to be a biter. I was like, yeah. <laughs> That he put a, in work in biting MC yeah, straight out word for word. Bro, my, I was mind blown. I was my, actually like, I don't want to battle that dude. That's my, <laughs> yeah, that's he's just gonna copy someone else's <laughs> shit to battle me. But you know, my my homie, I was just at my homie's pad last night, dog, and he was just telling because I was telling him how he has the dopest stories, dog. We're we're gonna literally put a segment on this show of yeah. some of his stories. We we just haven't got to record him yet, but we were talking to him about it yesterday, and he's like, he's like, yeah, dog, one time. I told the story. I, I seen this guy at work, dude, and he's telling a story, and everybody's like listening to him, and he's all, "Dude, it was my fucking story, dog." <laughs> he goes, "I know it was my story, cause who the fuck else could that happen to?" And I don't even remember what it was, and he yeah. goes, "Dog," and I go, "What well, did you say, some?" And he goes, "Dude, I didn't know how to. How do I tell somebody? Hey, dog, that's, that's my, my story." story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I got at work, we call Topper. That it would always come. If you had a story, he had a story to outdo oh, it. Oh, and I, then his stories were actually half of his stories were his brother's stories. Oh, fuck. But like his, didn't that happen to your brother? Everybody <laughs> knows somebody <laughs> like that, dog. And and you know what they always do? Like no matter how crazy your stories, your story is, they're like, ah, oh, that ain't shit. This happened to me. Like <laughs> your story ain't nothing, dog. Like no matter how crazy it is, someone's always gonna try to beat it. Mm -hmm. But hey, um, you know, speaking about the 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 battle MC days and stuff, um. You know that you came from that, and 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 I've and hip hop uh, was built from that, uh, from the giddy up. Anyways, it was based on yep. competition and stuff. It's and still uh, competitive in every aspect. Yeah, and and uh, you know I remember hearing you 
uh, on the even on the radio on the rap jams, bro. Yeah, you remember so, that shit, right? So if you go was back, it, was to it the, before uh, Kiss the roll FM. call? I was on the Kiss FM yeah. with Hollywood Hamilton. Uh huh. He had this thing called the Hollywood Hamilton rhyme fighting competition. Yeah, time to rhyme. I actually still have those cassettes from me in nineteen. I was in high school. I was going to. Um, Wilson High School in Hacienda Heights, uh -huh. oh, yeah. and, I, and uh, I was I was the weekly battle champion every week, and then one of the weeks I told the principal I was on it, and he actually got on the live speaker and said, "Listen to the radio at seven o'clock, two sweet from uh, our junior, and in, in, you know is going to be on the radio at seven o'clock on Kiss FM." Oh, that's what's up. <laughs> that's cool though, because then that you you know that. Uh, Ho hopefully they weren't too many haters and they actually called in and voted and make sure you won because i remember you were winning yeah yeah yeah. and there wasn't i mean I my, my high school was all love and there was no really even mcs there was only like a couple that uh -huh. i don't even think there was there was a couple that went and visited and hung out with us at the high school mm -hmm. but nobody else there really busted besides um uh the girl that sang uh, uh stephanie ferguson Oh, oh yeah, uh, 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 from, uh, uh, Fergie. Fergie, Fergie from uh, 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 what was the show Black called? Eyed Peas. Yeah, but what was the show uh, called? Kids, 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 yeah, Kids Incorporated. Kids Incorporated. Yeah. Yeah. K. I you remember D. that yeah. shit? Yes. Hey, yeah. I remember being. I was actually a fan. I, I, I remember like, being. I, I, was, I used to watch it, I'm and I remember 13. being proud that that she came from the area. Well, the other girl, Martika, was also from Hacienda Heights. She was the other one of the other singers, the older one. Yeah. Oh, and also uh, the youngest sis, Tina Yothers, from Family Ties, the the homie Corey's sister. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I don't know. You worked with him, I'm yeah, sure. I met, through I the Corey. You know what's crazy is before I met Shout out Corey Others. We before had him I on met the Corey too. Others, uh, um, I had actually, my homie Joe had told me this movie he had, Joe Camacho, rest in peace. One of his favorite movies from his childhood was Dreamscape. Oh, yeah. And he was oh, yeah. in that he when was he was a kid. Yeah. 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 Dreamscape was yeah. about having the power to telekinetically transfer your thoughts into the night. Mayors of the next I think person. he was Dennis and Quaid played his Dennis dad. Quaid, yeah, Dennis Quaid yeah. become an active participant. Like yeah. this snake came and attacked him and so forth. Uh -huh. So we we talked about this movie and I ended up doing a song about this movie and and about you know being an active participant in people's dreams and being able to kill off the evil side so you can become a better person. Dreamscape, right? Uh -huh, yeah, yeah. And and then I ended up rolling with my boy DJ Casey and Rican Son to Corey Gather's house. And I'm I'm looking at the poster on the wall. I'm like, yo, we got the Dreamscape, oh, yeah. Dreamscape poster. And then he points to the little boy, like, yo, that's Corey. I'm like, whoa. Like, I remember I seeing that poster about your house. movie. Yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember Reek and Son too, because yeah. dog, I used to, I used, I first met him chilling with, uh, with Mr. Grimm was my homie. Yeah. Because we went Ro to J. the same school coming up. We used to battle too. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I remember all this shit, dog. And then, <laughs> yeah, we were at, we were at, uh, Workman and then you were over at Wil uh, Wilson and then, yep. and then, but no, nah, but, and then we'd see each other at different parties, but that's how I met Reek and Son because, We'd yep. be over chilling at, at, at Roje's apartment and then um, playing video games and shit, token up. And then yep. I met Reek and Son there, dog. You remember uh, who else from the area? Ken L. He Ken, was an Ken, actor. Ken, 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 Kenneth Lawson. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's my boy uh, as well. He used like, to be on Moesha. Uh, Moesha. Right? Moesha. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep. And he's on some, a couple of other TV shows. And I mean, who else, we've man? We've been friends since we were. It's we, crazy, though. We've been friends since we were like 12 years old. There, there's like Chris. It from the Lords, I brought him with me oh, here one yeah, time. Like yeah. Me, Chris, uh, Ken, we were all like in a presentation together. <laughs> I remember like the Lords gotta, too. They used to, uh, they used to they dance used to battle. battle fools at at, yep. at house parties, dog. I remember yep. they used to get down, they man. To, yep, that was yeah, cool. man. Yeah, hey, future, so future two thousand. You're making me reminisce. Oh yeah, you're making me reminisce on shit, bro. Like uh, I must like feeling like I had a flashback right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but uh, the dance battles, uh, rap battles, but and the MC battles. I mean, I remember battling. Uh, we used to go to the the uh, over here in Covina. Right down the street, off of School Street, uh -huh. there was this place called the um, uh, the Temple, the Masonic Temple, and I used to battle uh, Jasuri and Lagundi Williams, and I knew Lagundi because I went to high school with him. He was like three three grades ahead of me, but I knew he was a dope MC. But at the house at this at this Masonic Temple hip hop party that was thrown down by these crazy Filipino DJs, they were called yeah. um, cre Creation Creativity. And these dudes that are still d dropping stuff in L.A. Uh, anyhow, um, me and uh, Lagundi Williams used to go at it, and I used to be battling him and Jasuri every time we go up there every, every month. One of the times that I went up there, just to mention, I had a truck. So I had the Lords and Future 2000, both dance crews, in my truck piled in 
we rolled up to the party. We got in with no problem. But when the party got broken up, everybody jumped in my truck and we tried to drive away and the cops pulled us over. Oh, shit. They pulled us. And this is when you can ride in the back of a truck. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. They yeah. pulled us over and they had to sit down because we, cause people were piled on top of each other. In the back. <laughs> they had to sit down all the way across the curb. Well, or they're, like, they're break dancers, so they're flexible. <laughs> at least they're, they're there, fitting. <laughs> there was like 15 people all lined up. And then two cop cars came and they're talking to each other. And they're like, you know what? Just get out of the city. Yeah. Instead of giving us a ticket, hey, bro, they just say, get out of here. I, I, have, a, I have a similar story because these are the good old SGV days, my brother. But uh, yeah. we were leaving a, a party. Well, we were at the party and, dog, a bunch of shit broke out. Like one of uh someone we knew i guess accidentally bumped somebody it started a hole and it was like these dudes from the hood right there where we were at and i don't i'm not gonna say where and all that but dog we literally uh everybody like when when everybody started scattering though because you know fuck we were about to, we, we knew gunshots were coming next but every everybody started scattering and i had a square back a volkswagen square back who like that i used to ride every, i took that motherfucker to so many parties dude but Everybody tried to like jump on the mo- and it dog it, at the worst time that shit it was kind of a uh it was a hoopty bro and that yeah. motherfucker literally conked out dude when we're trying to bone out oh, so shit. the homies dude fools jumped on the back of it they started pushing it right and we happened to be luckily it was a main street like and it was a hill yeah so fools jumped on the back dog hanging off the sides dog i had motherfuckers all over my car and we just ran straight down the the hill let it coast bro to get away and it got some good speed dog at least we got out of the area and we were we were straight but it was a that was a crazy crazy shit we we got lucky though yeah or else we would have got pulled over you know but uh the good old days bro like like i said from the battles and and uh you know everything that kind of entailed hip-hop and like you said yep. showing up with djs or 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 dance crews that that you used to battle part, do you remember party crews back then yeah they yeah. used to have the hats it was like lab which is like latin asiatic brotherhood yeah we were down with them TNT, my party the crew. nation's top there was you know all, everybody had the hats with the party crew well there was it was the high school era there was like these 15 girls that whenever i would rock and they would sing peach fuzz and they actually took on the name of uh, they had TDS on their hats, and that stood for too damn sweet. Oh shit! Like, I had like a. They're like, Is that your crew? I'm like, no. Like, <laughs> they just took my name and made the, made themselves their own crew, and they oh, were shit. fans and friends. But I Say, never. I'll take it. I never hooked up with none of them. Yeah, <laughs> I had a crew. I had a girl crew. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's some. That, hey, ain't nobody gonna be mad at you for that, especially right. back in the day. It was like, a different that, different era. Oh man, that good era though too, man. Yep. Hey, we we were just talking about uh with that with the homie right here about uh about you were saying the meme you saw like forties we used to have forties oh, yeah so we, we were speaking earlier so the homie was asking for what, what's the name of the drink Arion uh, truly truly so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we putting them on black now that's the homie no I'm not, no but Ari- 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 Mosley. Yeah, yeah 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 and I was like oh man I had just seen a meme of of yo in our days. We have 40s, and we really did have 40s. Yeah. I was t- telling a story. I, my boy Funic, uh, his Filipino homie, had an uncle that worked at the liquor store. We paid 20 bucks, go got, go back, go up, go to the back of the liquor store, rock out with a case with 12 40s. And we sh- there's only six of us, so we roll up holding two 40s each into the party and drinking them like nothing uh. because we had that high endurance oh. back then. Oh yeah, bro! Like I, the more you were, the more the more you can drink without yeah. getting really I, drunk. I, now I'm I'm waking so up the can, next day is was a bitch. Now nowadays, it takes me. <laughs> it takes me two days to recover uh, now, man. I, don't I, don't, I can't even drink 140 now. Uh, <laughs> It'll be nice and warm by the time I get oh, to the bottom. By the time you get to the bottom, food. Yeah, I know. You're getting warm. You got to drink them fast. Hey, real yeah. talk, man. And, yeah, and, uh, pound them. Hey, we, we used to, to pound, we like. used to put all our money together, like you said, and then we'd go, like, whatever was on sale. I'm talking everything from King Cobra to fucking... Oh. Uh, what did they have? Bud, they used to Bud, have uh, dry. No, Bud it? Ice. Bud Ice. They used oh, to have yeah. one yeah. called Bud Ice that they don't make anymore, and it was uh-huh. kind of like I think it was like a malt liquor version. Dude, it yeah, was some fucked that. up shit. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, we we drank a bunch of those. Which one did you say? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Ninety nine cents yeah. for a tall can, big yeah. ass forty. Yeah. No, but back oh, then it was, it was a, a forty. Yeah. If, you had girl, if you had girls, with you had to buy us a strawberry hill. Oh, oh yeah. and see, that was the one. You knew you were you, you were you were gonna get somewhere if you got some <laughs> strawberry hill for the for the ladies, man. <laughs> hey, I, hey, 
Hey, my story. Hills, my real. story when we came up on the most when we came up on the most drink. Shay, this is from the homie that we're gonna have. Like I told you, stories from this fool. Oh, yeah. We yeah. went to Havasu one year, dog, and it, and then uh, uh, the homie were, he happened to work out of all places. This guy used to get a job so easy, bro. I don't know how he how he used to do it. Even if he got fired somewhere, he would have another job in like two days. Dog, he just always figured out a way. But he was working at a, a an AM PM, bro. Oh yeah. my! We literally went in there and fucking. <laughs> We took, I don't remember how many, we, 18 packs, bro. We we did 18 packs and then we go up and he goes, yeah, he goes, just buy a couple things. He tells us and we'll, we'll, we'll hook you up. I'll hook you up with a deal. Right. But he didn't know the, all the homies went in and everybody like grabbed like two 18 packs each and threw them on there. It was a pile and (laughs) the homie gave them, I forgot what it was. It was like Like five bucks or something. (laughs) And this fool gave him change back, bro. Like oh. he still gave him change back, and we walked out. But hey, it worked, man. And Havasu, we had we, at least we had some alcohol. I think years yeah. later he said that. I think they were supposed to have given him more than that, but he didn't really say it till years later. I don't know if he got fired after that. <laughs> <laughs> and if he yeah. and if he did, he found another job, uh, <laughs> guaranteed, man. Hey, um, going way back though, uh, you know, speaking of jobs, dog, you've done everything hip hop, and we'll get into more of the specifics that you're still doing now but right. i remember you used to work at the we didn't have that many spots to yeah, get it was minimal record stores to choose yeah. from so my first job ever in life because uh, i was already hanging out at the record store in la puente called johnny's records so from hanging out they hired me i was getting paid five bucks an hour yeah, that was the that was the rate <laughs> back then i think that was i think you were getting paid extra bro the, the, it used to be it less was cash though that yeah was, that was big because i think minimum wage was 425 or oh, something I, yeah i remember that i was at burger king making that <laughs> yeah, back in those days. that's that's some yeah. real shit right there yeah Johnny, Johnny's records, yeah. and I was good friends with my boy Mauricio, mm-hmm. who worked at the um, oh the Mercado, the Mercado. Yeah, yeah. His mom owned that's the still there. Shop and yeah, yeah, yeah. He 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 basically had this record store over there, and then the people that worked for him were all like my customers and friends. So I kind of you know it was I visited there often, and then Mauricio ended up being like a a, a financier part of Illosophic Records when I put out the Illosophic Volume 1, and so oh. he was rolling with me to all these radio shows, and I mean, that's some other history. It's like, yo, well, you know, he, the he, record store history, it brewed both ways, but interesting thing to say about Johnny's records is the the owner, Johnny, after he passed away, the other girl we worked with, her name was Erica, she took over the store and she kept me. Um, Erica ended up getting engaged to Mallow Man Ace, huh. and Mallow Man Ace's DJ at the time was Hitman Julio G. Mm-hmm. So, one day, uh, he asked if he can get some records. I, Eric was like, yeah, yo, Callum, go ahead. Come in and pick out whatever he wants. He can have it all. So he came in, went crate digging. And I'm like, yeah, she said you can take whatever you want. And in the midst of that, he started talking to me about um, mute, you know, the production. And I spit some rhymes for him. And he's like, yo, I'll get you some beats. And he came back and gave me this beat tape. And That's I recorded crazy. a couple songs over them. And, you know, we, we had an early connection. That's you crazy. Know? And that yeah. was around the time when Cypress, I got the cassette from cypress hill when it was cypress hill tribe and it was it was the demo cassette and i was able to bump it and then at one point malaman ace was moving in with erica in uh in, in walnut and they had me drive the u-haul truck and the people helping was be real sent in that's the, crazy earn dog the guy from soul assassins and yeah so earn dog there. that's yeah. the homie right yeah. there yeah. so i'm in the in the u-haul with them like like yo i listened to you you cassette I like that holding your head song. That was my, that was the one that caught me at the time. Was uh-huh. holding your head, even your though your motherfucking head. <laughs> yeah, dude, that shit was hard. So what? So they, what was it? They went by Cypress Hill. Cypress Hill Tribe. Oh, I, was, I never knew that. It I was didn't Cypress know that. Hill Tribe because uh-huh. it was that Daisy Age era, you know, like Tribe Called Quest yeah. and De La Soul. Well, mm-hmm. uh, they were Cypress Hill Tribe, and they were actually dancers. They, I was gonna uh-huh. say, yeah. you, yeah. you could catch Ace. them on uh, Mellow Man Ace. You see him on uh, one of the videos. I think it was, it wasn't Mentirosa. It was the one. Uh, Oh, what's that one called? Was it rap? Uh, Rhyme Fighter? Rhyme Fighter, it might have been that one, but um, you see Be Real dancing, dog, with some baggy pants, like doing yep. dance moves and wow. shit. Yeah, they were dancers from, yeah. from Ace. That was Yeah, it. that's crazy. And and the, yeah, that was their the, 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 That whole intro. era was so crazy right there, all the stuff that transpired. And then, then yep. you know, what's crazy is another uh, another guy from our area that was in, you know, in the mix with all that, obviously, uh 
the OG Tony G. Tony G. And so he yep. had his spot, the Those G two spot, were the, mix masters the, the, the G spot in El Monte. And that was another one where it's like when you're from SGV, you're kind of like proud of that. Like these cats made all this dope music and they're right here, dog, by yep. us. You know what I mean? Yep. So, be, you know, you, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Grimm, obviously. That, yep. There was another OJ. guy named. Uh, Gmo, I believe, from West Covina, that had a there, there was some, he had a banger on the radio for a little while, but there was a you know Minister Too Bad. I don't know if you remember Minister Too yeah, Bad. Yeah, and past that demo stage. Yeah, I'm tired. Of, that's Fat Jack is from West Covina. By oh, the way. yeah, yeah. Well, he's not from West Covina, but he lived in West Covina and was producing Minister Too Bad. Uh, there was another Roche. dude, uh, Dirty Rat. Dirty Rat. You remember oh, him I too? Remember yeah, him yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Dirty Rat's still around. Yeah, I, man, I haven't he, seen him in a while, yep, bro. He, he used to rap his ass yep. off, bro. I remember that. Yep, he's out in the in the valley, and he did some stuff with Tash lately. Oh, okay. He did like, yeah. That's fucking dope. But see, you know, what I'm getting at, I guess, is, you know, maybe we, we don't always get, we're not, like, visible on the map yet, but we're getting there, I feel like, the SGV, the 626, mm -hmm. formerly 818, if you remember yeah, that, yeah. before we became 626. That's crazy that it's 818 this far from the va the other valley when we were 818. Well, I think they just counted all the way down the line of the foothills, right? Yeah. They counted that, at, but then it got too much, too many people, and so they divided it up. was the new area code. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It was like 1989. I, I, I was happy that we got our own. I, yeah. I, I liked it. There were people that had to get their 818 tattoos crossed 562 and 626 came out at the same time, I think. Yeah, oh, 562. Yeah. Because yeah. 562 used to be 310. Or, or, two, or 213. Yeah. And they, yeah, and they made them their own area. Hey, dog, yep. let me give this toast to the SGV 626. Uh, toast to 626. Right. Today, 626. Yeah, yeah that's right. And we're actually day. recording on 626 day. Um, perfect day to have Jism High Def here, man, in the building with us. And, uh, um, Arian Mosley. Th this, this, shout out to you guys for coming through and chilling with us as well, man. It's just our. Hip hop dojo. We like to chill here, put some in the air, and uh, yeah, and listen to some good music. Um, yep. But you know, uh, uh, this will actually be when you guys hear this. This is pre-recorded, but when you hear it, but just so you guys know, we recorded on six two six day, man. It makes sense. So, uh, hey man, let's talk about it. Early years too, when you started putting stuff together, you mentioned some of the names, but okay. yep. I know you you've had like a working relationship with cats like the Baker Boys too. Yes, um, you've been dealing with them for a while. You've worked with a lot of cats, and, and whether it was you rapping, like there's a bunch of cats that I find out later, like you either mix or mastered or did or recorded their shit. Like you, you were engineering their music. I, I find this out after I hear something. Oh yeah, I recorded this with with Jism and you know yep, some of yep. that you it's don't a, hear. It's a long list. But it's you but very, you've been working very long list. I mean, I've been mastering albums since 1998. There it I've is. I've been mixing. I started off mixing on four track, and then I start you know went from the four track to the VS 880 and the 1880, and then I and I was going to studios recording songs with different people and 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 asking a lot of questions and learning. So when I finally got Pro Tools, I think it was Pro Tools four. You know, I got my computer with Pro Tools 4 and I started mixing at the crib on, on, on the old, you know, on those older sessions. I was honored to be able to be able to have the dope MCs I was working with come through. I had Super Nat up in there, Cannabis. Um, but before all of that, uh, I used to go on, on, you know, from 94 to 95 was a good radio era. Uh, in 1994, when hip hop was starting to get on the radio, it was Friday Night Flavors, and you would hear with, underground with joints, the Baker Boys, and yeah, they were playing man. and heavy. rap battle shit. They were yeah. playing Wu Tang, Alcoholics, yeah, man. Far Side. You know, '93 yeah. was Chino the big Excel. year for all that music, but now it was finally you used to hear it on the radio. You used to you know? hear him on the on the spitting on the mic on you know the the stations and like yep. uh, the Mexicans and all. The yeah. Mexicans. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that's when so. the West Side Radio dropped a little bit after that. Do you yeah, remember West Side Radio? Yeah, that dropped in like middle 19. 95, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah shout out to Julio, Julio G. G. And the Baker Julio Boys G. And Tony I'm G. I'm honored to have Julio G. do the intro on the new song that we just released. I don't know if you've heard it, but we have a new song with me, Neb Love, and Fish from CVE. Oh, with so fire on the got... hook. We got Julio G. on the intro. It's shout out to the blow, the new too, man. West Coast classic produced by Navi the North out of Canada. That cat's really been killing it for me. Dope. Man. But um, but what I was saying is on Friday nights we used to, you know, I used to go to Friday Night Flavors and. I love, you know, Baker Boys let, let me get up on the mic and they would interview me here and there. And I think at one time they had J-Rock from the Beat Junkies interview me as a character called Cotton Mouth with a high-pitched voice. And <laughs> it was always, you know, I was, every time I went there, it was fun. I, as a matter of fact, my first visits 
to the Baker Boys uh, Friday Night Flavors, before I could get in, I had to get past security, and the security was Big Boy. Oh they, shit! You know, like he was like, oh, he was, you know, talking about giving me karate chops, and that's uh, how he got into. His, that's people how he got don't in. know he that. Was the far side's bodyguard. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, he, was yeah. A, he was a far side's bodyguard, and he was a security guard for the Baker for for their Friday Night Flavors show. Yeah. And from him, basically networking, that's how he ended up getting his own show and mm-hmm. and evolved and really blew up from there. Do you still have that voice, the cotton mouth voice? Or are you? Do I? It wasn't my. Co- I, oh, I, oh, I do have a cotton mouth character. Oh, though. the character was you. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I actually do have a higher pitch voice, mm-hmm. and I did a song. I've been doing songs with the higher pitch voice. Oh, okay. So uh, <laughs> one of it's called Workaholic, and I'm in the middle of dropping that next week. Oh, where shit. I do so, it, you hear both of my characters. Yeah, I, got, I do the regular jism. I started out with cotton mouth, and then I have my homie from New York, Kazi Sutra. Uh, who's down with Strange Music? Uh, um, he he he's actually the brother of Nova the Wraith. He's on the song with me, but you get to hear both characters. And I've had people hear it and be like, "Who's that?" Yeah. Well, that's me. They're, oh, you should use that voice more often. <laughs> 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 it's a different style. Yeah, no, that that's that's and there's uh you know artists have done that before to get the it, it's all part of the art you know is uh uh how you how you want your cadence to go or or relay the message on the on the album, on the music, man, because, you yeah. know. It's just a diverse uh, way to deliver. Yeah, and, but, um, you know, a lot of a lot of dope cats you've you've worked with over the years, you know, legends in the game and shit, and, and like I said, people don't know that, you know, you've been mixing, mastering, all the stuff behind the scenes for a cool minute, man, so. Um, to, to name drop, I, I've worked with, um, just to kind of mention Oh, yeah, we, we'd like to just know. Just a shout out, pretty much a shout out to all the heads that I work with, the ones that I can remember. At the top of my head in his, you know, dilated peoples, Jurassic Five, the Alcoholics, Far Side, Freestyle Fellowship, Ahmad from the Fourth Avenue Jones, A Wall One, uh, Two Max and Cinco, Mexican descent, uh, AC Alone, Abstract Rue, Mike and Nine, Ooh. Peace, Ganja K. Um, rest in peace to Ganja rest K. Rest in peace to Ganja. Actually, I met Arion. Through Ganja K. Oh, I shoot. keep saying Arion because me and Arion got some r- r- real You guys fire. been working on some shit. We I know that. We got some real fire. We got like two different projects. Well, one of the projects is like Radio Rally. We got Summer Songs. It's Reggaeton. And we actually, to mention, just hooked up with this band who's going to take like four of the songs and do the live and uncut version of it. And we're going to be performing with this band, House of Vibe, pretty soon. That's so right, man. That's so. A, so, something that's on the next. So, but. so I, w- I want to get into um, some of the new stuff, and we and we'll do that in a cool second. Cause in a in a couple minutes, we're gonna actually play the new, the newest video, the newest joint. Yes. We'll have that on the show. But um, you know, uh, speaking on you know a lot of the cats you worked with, man, uh, uh, a bunch of those cats, man, uh, Blodians, man, Project Blode, man. Speak on it, man, because you got the, you know, you, you've been working with them cats for a cool minute. And yep. those are legendary yep. uh, uh, West Coast well, artists and MCs right there. Yes. Well, basically, while I was working at Johnny's Records, I used to get the Herb Magazine for free in the record store. There was a segment in Herb, Herb Magazine that used to talk about events and things that were going down in L.A. In one of the segments, it was honoring the good life. And it was breaking down the Good Life Cafe and how mm-hmm. dope it was and how many MCs came up and busted and, and the fact that it was like the mecca for hip hop in LA. So I'm over here reading it like, yo, that sounds pretty cool. I like I like to see it. It's not something I heard about from anybody. It's not something that my friends would talk about. It was something that I read about and after I read I was like, Well, I wanna figure this out. I wanna figure out where it's at and go. So, you know, a couple of weeks after I read it, I found the address. It wasn't like I could go on the Internet and look it up and find it. I had to, like, I, somehow, some way, I found the address, and uh, uh, me and my boys went up there, and we rocked. And that was, you know, at The Good Life, it was like Showtime at the Apollo. If you were whack, the crowd would boo you off a of stage. Oh, yeah. But a- saying, and at that spot, you couldn't uh, cuss. There at was the no th- cuss words yeah. allowed. There yeah. was no miggity diggities because a lot of people were doing they, that. They didn't want you. They wanted to get raw crowd. skill. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, because those fillers. Those are yeah, fillers. Yeah. You, you, they wanted that raw skill. And, yeah. and also, you can't be whack uh, sometimes cuss words to a certain extent are fillers. Like, people yeah. use them as a crutch. There's no creativity. Uh, yeah, and they use them as a crutch. And then at that spot, you couldn't use those crutches. No lyrical miracle. Yeah, once it came 
Witch of Hero for Miracles came out, you got please pass the mic. Yeah, dog. And it went from one person to five people to 20 people singing, please pass the mic. And they turned your mic off. And you, you were off a of stage and people were laughing and it was comedy. You know, if somebody was whack, they got booed. There's some, uh, got- there's some known cats that went there and got a please pass the mic to oh, when they went there and, and Joe, uh, yeah, that, see, yeah. I, see oh, i didn't yeah, even yeah, yeah. Yeah. there Joe it is right dope, there but back and, and he was dope back then as well but he went up there and spit and what i think what it was is he was spitting so slow mm-hmm. and people they were so fast forward mm-hmm. they just it was, it was, they were the crowd was just not into it yeah so he got please pass the mic well, it, and he was like fuck you especially <laughs> especially at times like where you know, some somebody like maybe Rifleman just got off the stage and yeah. and spitting the rapid fire at, and then you just you know it was it probably wasn't a good transition. You know what I mean? It was just so slow. It was, uh, it was you know slow too slow back then was different. You know, it was kind of like cholo rap. There was a lot of cats, dog, that you know that have been you know kind of known. Uh, we when we had we actually had Rifleman too on the on the pod, but. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of cats that people that are hip hop uh, connoisseurs will know that you know maybe that style was probably bitten and it's someone from blo- like Styles dog they had a lot of Styles at the bloat and yeah people are going and scouting and kind of picking up yeah, yeah. picking up this yeah. here and there I heard yeah. you know pe- names like you Bone know Thugs and Harmony Bone Thugs Bones. for sure and, and, and Ice Cube middle, Cube and uh, they went out well Cube I, I don't want to get in any problems with anybody but. Um, Everybody was familiar with Volume Ten right, back yeah. then, and Volume Ten was an original yeah. style. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the uh, Q put out a new album. It was when he came with the with, with the Lynch Mob. Yeah, he yeah, came with mob. a different style, yeah, bro. And I, style. see, this is just hip hop history. This, too, yeah. this yeah. is just hip hop history right here, and that's what we we, we don't I mind hate to talk about it because I don't we want don't. any fashion, I don't want any bad feedback. Oh no, I, I mean uh, I was cool with the Lynch Mob. They're my customers at Johnny's Records. Oh, that's just <laughs> no, <laughs> Doug. I have that. I uh, I've seen him the perform gorillas live. In the tree. Yeah, gorilla, yeah. And gorillas in the mist. I think one of them just got out too. He was locked down for a while. JD, right? JD, yeah, just got out. I got uh, love for all of them, but with I With the boom, ping, ping. Yeah. Listen to the 10. ill shit that I bring, bring. Yeah, see, so they they were saying that. And that yeah, was yeah. back then, you know. If that you, was an Ice Cube, really. If you do your research. If you listen to Ice yeah. Cube and all of his songs, is just on this one album, he did a Volume 10 style all throughout. And Volume 10 was pissed. <laughs> well, you know and what? Then people thought Pistol Grip Pump was Volume 10. Uh-huh. And then Mac 10 came out, and they, still, and they, were, they were thinking, you know, Ice Cube, Mac 10. Volume ten, Mac yeah. ten, mm-hmm. they got all confused. Like yeah. so, Volume Ten's fame, which should have broke through for being so different and yeah. original, got taken in a way, but it, not totally taken. But it's cool. Shared, shall I say? It's cool to see Volume you know, still doing this. Ice thing. Cube did that style so heavy. They thought when they heard Volume Ten that it was Ice Cube. Yeah, I, I, was, I'm, I'm glad uh, that. You vo- remember that album? What was it called? The the vo- the Ice Cube album, Death Certificate, not Death Certificate. Uh, uh, lethal Injection. Lethal Injection. Uh, uh, marijuana affects the memory. The, well, the, the one where he did that style. Oh, that was the Gorillas in the Mist. I no, thought no, that when was he first came. Oh, wasn't it? That um, was the yeah. group. Gorillas oh, in the you're Mist. talking about the Predator? Is yeah. it the Predator? Predator. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. right. That's right. On that whole album, he did all Volume Ten. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know, uh, like I said, I'm glad to see Volume Damn. still doing his thing. But you know, here's the thing, man. I'm an Ice Cube fan. And you know I, he's Same always he's always gate. he's like always I done um, memorized. That was an NWA. He's always mm. innovated, like yep. or even going to transitioning to directing films and writing films and different stuff. Like yep. that was always you know I, like I, he was always my favorite man, member of NWA. Like a bunch of stuff, dog. So, but you know I there's I used other to draw his eyes the way he's, he's cringe. You know? Oh yeah, I used to draw his eyes on my flyer. So did my homie uh, Chris from 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 the flyer parties we were doing. We used to have it. Ice Cube's eyes just upset, you know. What yeah, I'm saying? as the as the flyer itself. Uh, you you just that, that just recognize with hip hop, yep. Yeah, but um, iconic. I, I was I was saying, you know, that ain't the the first time that I mean there was a song or something that like had some issues with another group and they were cool. I mean everything's cool now, and I think people know who I'm talking about. But 
stuff like that. But yeah, what ice, I will say, Ice Cube and uh, Cypress Hill yeah. have a similar problem. Yeah, like Cypress Hill. That's what it. I mean with the uh, throw was, your sets in the yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that yeah I heard that story and From throw the your horses mouth. Yeah, yeah, that one, yeah. that whole thing. Yeah, they were in so, the studio. He heard what they did, and he did the same song uh-huh. and, and put it on the soundtrack. Um, yeah. But Ew. but what I will say is that means though, like someone of his stature that's gotten to this where he could you know make big big moves like he's you see that he still has his ear to the street obviously because to be able to to imitate to be able to get some of that stuff i mean you have to at least somebody's filling you in or you're just doing your own research but you got to at least give him that i say i'll give him that man because uh he he's he's has longevity that's definite Yep, and uh, and he's evolved and on a big level. Uh, uh, yeah, super ultra to be able mega. to make kids movies and shit. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole like different. That's a whole other uh, a, a bag right there. Yeah. Some money right there. Yeah. Making kids flicks. Hey, yeah. you got uh, Shay? You got anything before we we're gonna hit the? Oh, actually, video. um, I, I wanted to ask uh, how many total albums would you say you have in that's your catalog? A, that's a crazy question. <laughs> yeah. I don't know anymore. Yeah, yeah I, it, I now wondering. it's like oh, it's got to be over twenty maybe 25 and then i'm dry i got like seven more on deck right now yeah. we're about to i know you're always working so yeah know, it's so. it's i don't even know the exact number yeah. anymore it's so many so imagine if you but asked I remember how many albums days, you worked on yeah, oh that's even more that's than that. like a, yeah it's gotta be yeah. in the 50s you're gonna have to or unroll maybe, and then how many albums have i mastered yeah. is even separate you yeah. know Beyond just engineering. If anybody listening knows, let us hit us up. Let yeah, us know. <laughs> he, I think uh, th- he would have one of them lists, you know, where they're like shouting people. Like out all the discographies on the internet are incorrect. They're, they're they're limited and they don't have all of the information. Right, yeah. None of them, for yeah. some reason. I should actually probably dig through and just make a whole discography breakdown. Sure, or go on go. Discogs and make your own it. so to get them right. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, correct them if if you would. Cause no, because I was dropping because I was back then I was dropping an album every year and a half uh however in 97 i dropped a, i dropped two albums in 98 and then after that every year every year to year and a half i was dropping an album mm-hmm. but beyond that then there's years that i did i dropped two three albums in a year and right now i got like seven on deck last year we dropped four so hey, working man and then also you know catch him rocking out live somewhere near you but we'll get into all that in a sec we're going to show his newest uh, visual that just dropped as of late. By the time yeah, this yeah. comes out, it'll probably have another visual. But, <laughs> but this particular <laughs> one right here is produced by Be Ready. It is off of the album entitled Knights of the Old Democracy. The name of the track is Knights of the Old Democracy also. You can see the our backdrop. Historic right? uh, pre-Star Wars era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Check, oh, there we go. check it out, man. We got Jism High Def in the building, man. This is the Rabbit Season podcast. Uh we're all the way live, man, and it's uh, Mosley. today's 626, so we're having a good time, man. We'll be right back after this. There's some high def in the building. Brah! Yo. Trouble. My philosophy so ill, kid, it could be the boy in the 
bubble. I'm double down for the struggle. Juggle the disciplines. Be humble when you won't stumble. See the hit or miss when you witness this. The magnificent last hope. Invest in the facts, grow through the cash flow. Break on through to the other side. We'll bring your grass grows. Layer the intricate. Tailored for the infinite. Organizing rhyme syndicates. Cater to me into No, stop it, No, stop Hip-hop Rock with me Take it back to the nights of an old democracy No hip-hop hypocrisy It's not a mystery We got busy Mics were hot and crispy Make it take some history Rock with me Take it back to the nights of an old democracy No hip-hop hypocrisy It's not a mystery We got busy On mics that were hot and crispy Make it take some history Define a high velocity Profit from the prophecy, master the power of the force. Of course, there'll be animosity, curiosity, kill the monstrosities on your behavior. Learn to reprogram from the rebel Mandalorian, your own savior. Give them what they're waiting for. Get your story in. We glorious bastards and notorious products of historians. Stop from power by Emporium. Pour out one in memoriam. On the pinnacle of the high command, Jedi Order, Valedictorian. Midi Chlorian counts off the Richter. Symbiotically inside the cells, attached to the victor. I'm the vivid constrictor of the clearer, bigger picture. Got you caught up in the mixture, a quick stir of the elixir opens your third eye to the scripture, cooking up the recipe, determining destiny, they question me, thinking my elite chemistry will be the death of me, maybe eventually, but for now my squad's wrong, gets the job done successfully, being all I was meant to be. No, stop it, Asanya! No, stop it! Hip-hop. Rock with me, take it back to the nights of an old democracy No hip-hop hypocrisy, it's not a mystery We got busy, mics were hot and crispy Make it take some history Rock with me, take it back to the nights of an old democracy No hip-hop hypocrisy, it's not a mystery We got busy, on mics that were hot and crispy Make it take some history Stop acting out of character Heckling the narrator Meddling and unsettling Assassinate the predator Nature of the competitor, stranger danger. Pass through with the street creditor. Chop it up with the beat editor. Make the temperatures heat up on the regular. Step ahead of the metamorphosis. Going deeper, submerged on planet water, spilling till out the registers. Of course, this is our imperial level. A one with the force of the rebel. Yeah, so we'll never learn whatsoever. Don't call it a comeback no, with a clever burn. Asanya. No, stop it, Yeah, that was the newest visual from the homie Jism High Def. All Deadly. We'll give a toast to that. Yeah, yeah. Tonight to the old oh, That's right. Oh, and, and, uh, ooh, that crispy video I was telling you, man. You've been um, uh, working with somebody on the new visuals too, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think the last six videos were shot by Alec Big Al Entertainment Productions. Um, yeah, we, we're keeping them working. Yeah, he was referred through doing some videos with me and Arion. I think we did three, to be, and he did three more for me on uh, the Jism High Definition projects, and we're keeping them. We're keeping them going. So let me ask you, man. Um, let's let's start with you know we're rocking the shirts right here, but explain to him the whole Illosophic and and where that's come from, the projects associated with it, and all that stuff too. For those that don't might not know. All right, so Illosophic is, of course, ill philosophies. You know, philosophies ill. You know, it's sick. sick These sick, are dope tees, bro. Sick. We, you know, the, I've, I've had logos throughout the many years. Thank you for rocking and representing the Illosophic Records shirt. Um, yeah, we've, I've been putting out cassettes since 1994. Started off with cassettes, went from cassettes to CDs to officially being a record company by putting out wax. The wax came out in 1997. The first Illosophic Records wax was produced by Evidence of Dilated Peoples. It was called Based on Principle, and it had another track on there called Flows Explode. Um, and then the uh, and then I had num a number of vinyl come out under Illosophic afterwards. One of them was the Dreamscape 12 inch, which we just talked we about. We were speaking on that. Yep, we, I had another 12 inch with Mike and I called Warmer. And it also had a song with Taboo from Black Eyed Peas and um, a production from C4. Uh, see for yourself. Um, 
Yeah, Illosophic Records was established in 1994. Uh, my first wax was in 1991. That was with uh, when I was in the group called The Unit. It was a red vinyl. Um, it, it, I was in the crew with TNT. We were doing lowrider car shows. Um, but Illosophic Records has been around since 1994, been consistently putting out product throughout the years. Um, we're now more digital than physical, um, but many CDs, uh, work with an uh, uh, incredible amount of well-renowned, hard-working, dope artists. You guys got a catalog, man. Shout out to C4, too, man. That dude's been doing his, his, his music for a long time, too, man. Um, Good. We, yep. we got to chop it up with him. Not, I mean, it's been, it's, it hasn't been that long, but it was yep. like this year, you know what I mean? Dope, so, dope. Yeah, so, but uh, it's good to see, like, a lot of times I find out later, too, like I said, it's like, oh, this homie worked with this homie, uh, and I didn't even know sometimes, you know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah. even the artists I work with, like Soul King, people didn't know that, you know, everybody knows back, back I mean, from our era, you know, we were all on the Wake Up Show together. And then it evolved to us, you know, doing shows, but we were just homies kicking it. And then ultimately we got into the studio and started knocking stuff out. But um, I like the way you guys so King sound Barber together. Shop MC's Liquor Crew has his own yeah. separate original sound. And when he came with me, he still stood on his original style and I did mine. And when we fused, it was that, that's what I'm tripping out on that. It meshed. Opposites. Yeah. And it meshed though. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. Cause we yeah. just vibed out. Yeah. 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 They used to say, uh, who was it? I think abstract root told us you guys remind me of nice and smooth. Cause uh, yeah, yeah, he's the smooth you know, and, and, laid back flow, laid back flow. And then you, j you know, jism was there aggressive, uh, aggressive and up tempo. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so we even did a song called, um, Sometimes I run slow. Sometimes I run oh, quick. Ah, shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's I off of the new album. But me, yeah, me and uh, So King, def we, we, we knocked out that triple O G L P, dropped it in 2018 and 2019. And uh, we worked on a second project, which is what I'm mentioning right now, which is entitled Doc Weiler. Doc Weiler, um, we put out our first single in January of this year, featuring Rocka from Dilated Peoples. The song was called Be Great. The video's out there. We put it uh, up with a Cypher Effect. It got like 38,000 views right now. Nice. Please check it. It's super dope. Check that out. Jism High Definition and So King, Doc Weiler. Uh, we got some singles dropping continuously as well. Coming up, we got e Rule on the album, Born in Law. Um, uh, Born in Law is dope, bro. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of Born in Law, I, I produced a project for Born in Law. It's, it's called Six. We're in the process of dropping that as well. We did drop three of the singles. One of the singles was um, it's called Son of Man, which featured Planet Asia and e Rule. Um, and another one was King's Thing, but check it, yo. S Born in Law is coming with it. Another artist and a uh, person that I've actually interviewed with you before is uh, Monstro. Me and Monstro, along with DJ Ja Blues. Dog, he's been busy, too. Both them dudes. Yeah, yeah. We had a project together called Riders on the Storm. Mm -hmm. And that also featured Imani from the far side, um, Zagu Brown from Global Flotations, um, Neb Love, and a couple other, uh, a couple other artists. That, that album was solid. But in the meantime, I ended up producing an album for Monstro. So that that's up and coming. We we dropped two singles, one of them called Tendencies, and another one called Sultan. And uh, we're in the middle of doing videos for those as well. So how do you how do you uh, you know balance your time, man? Obviously, you're in the studio a lot, um, but you know from artist to you know you wear a lot of hats. You could you could uh, engineer, you you could mix and master, you produce for artists. Like um, how how do you? <laughs> How do you d break up each day when it comes to that, man? Well, I just prioritize and priority list. Uh, I'm working 48 hours a week at my day job. That, pay that pays the bills, keeps my rent and my food and everything else good. Uh, when I, so when I'm not working, I come home, wind down, and power up. And when yeah. I power up, I, I, I look at, at what's the most important. Clock in for the second shift. Yep. Yeah. I look at what's most important. What do I need to tackle first? And I, uh -huh. I knock them out one by one. Uh, for the last six years, I stopped making beats because I didn't want to rap over my own beats anymore. Mm -hmm. After rapping over them for so many years, I just got tired and, and, and not liking the way it was working because when I make a beat, I know how I construct it. So when I actually started writing to my own beats, 
I'm like, uh, it's like another instrument. And I'm mm-hmm. like, I couldn't find the energy or the, f- it, 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 it was really giving me a little writer's block. So when I started just working with producers head on, I was only writing rhymes to beats that I felt beats that that you know, that basically motivated me to want to spit on them and i was able to get the rhymes out easier and faster so i stopped making beats altogether didn't want to work with other artists as a producer for six years until agala came through agala much respect from new york came through and uh, rocked a couple of songs with me but in the process of that he's playing me his beats and in the middle of playing me beats he said i'll oh, check this out and made a couple of beats like in in 10 minutes yeah because he, like, he does both also man he, yeah. yeah yeah but this dude's a beast like i was crazy maybe with 12 the energy, minutes man. he made three beats and then started playing me some more beats and i was like you just made three beats in 12 minutes oh check out this you can yeah. do this like this and he had a basically a fast streamlined way of banging stuff out and it was fire and out and it just got me excited again and I, yeah, you know, that's all you need sometime yep, that yep, little so, motivation back and shit so mm-hmm. speaking on that i started getting excited started making beats again and in between making beats I was working with Arion uh-huh. at, at, at um, and we had like a like a side computer business. He he sells computers and I do programming, and then I was doing my own little computer business. But in between the computer business, while we were working, we were working, like computer things going. He said, "Power up a beat," and I was like, "Yo, I just started making beats again. Check this out," and then we would do a song, and we, would, we so we started knocking out. I think we got like ten songs on some. Um, I want to say boom bap, but it's hip hop. You know, ten songs closer to boom bap than anything but just us getting together and rocking and in between that uh, phoenix orion came through and we had vibed out with me him and phoenix orion and we got on some pure gas over one of his beats which was a, he made the beat arion made the beat and it was on some new style and we, we, and we vibed out and it was it was dope so then we did a couple more with me him and phoenix and in the middle of doing a couple more one of them was a reggaeton joint and we had that one on repeat, and he was telling me that the girls love it, and I was like, the girls I play it for love it as well. So yeah. from doing that, um, we were like, let's keep doing some of that since that's dope. So me and Arion, you know, when we were sessioning up, if Phoenix wasn't there, it was just us two, so we went, we kept it going. And uh, we ended up doing about 10 songs, mostly reggae tone. Some of them are trap. I don't know how to explain it, but somebody just told me it's R&B. So I don't think it's R&B. But <laughs> I guess if you say so, because this dude's killing it on the singing. Speak a little bit about the album. I'm gonna pass the headphones over if that's okay. Oh yeah, yeah. If but it, 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 yeah, we'll make sure we get him on the uh, the mic though, yeah, so we can hear him. So we can hear him right. Hey, but you you guys, uh, Talk about a little bit about you, how the you know the happened, how the, came together. the chemistry. That's what I was gonna say. Like you guys started off, you know, kind of casually working together, and then it and then it somehow uh developed and then now now you guys got that chemistry yeah, where you yeah. can knock joints out like motherfucker dog we found our we found a, a formula man yeah in, in the midst of doing uh because you know jism to me is like the og like so he's the underground so i always called him the underground legend yeah but now um yeah when you start making them kind of beats and we found that sound it's been at first it was kind of hard coming out with those kind of lyrics uh well how are we gonna do it but now when i go to the studio we already know Mm-hmm. And we can all, you know, Jism, he could do, we could do anything. We could do any kind of style, but that one stuck, stuck out. It's probably there, better R&B than the Omarion versus Battle. <laughs> 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 oh, oh yeah, I don't write. What the? Yeah, I don't write no more. Uh, you're you're off the top with yeah, it, like, do filling the, the, the vibes. Yeah, I'm, uh, the paper's in my head. I don't write no more, so uh, I kind of like two bars at a time or four at a time. I'll tell Jism, I'm ready. Oh, uh-huh. I'm ready. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm ready. <laughs> that's that that's a, when you're getting them that's you're feeling them vibes in the studio yeah, bro like yeah, you know that's what i call it hey that's funny i'll be like you know how i make music oh good vibes yeah people well some people like you know they want you to oh i, I need this beat like everybody's having a session in the studio and then you'll sometimes have somebody who's like oh let me have this i, I need to take, to take it, it home. home yeah and it's like but well, we're all vibing out man just throw that part into it too you know what i mean uh, but uh, it, it's I another leave, exercise. I, I leave Jism of House, like I always leave Jism House, and he always. And when I come back, he has his verse done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always an exercise of the mind within bro. the night, though. Yeah, to, or he to, might email it to me like four in the morning. To 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 do your style that way, though, that's exercising your mind skills, though, yes, too. Yeah. Like, like uh, not only feeling the vibes, but um, uh, coming up with uh, the you know the lyrics to to portray those vibes right on the spot, man. That's a whole. Another exercise right there. Hey, there, there's something to be said. I wanted to say, like, um, 
I don't know if it's meshing two styles or whatever or bridging the gap, but, you know, going from maybe OG, like his battle style, and then and then from what you're doing, there's a nice spot you can meet in the middle, and then you're getting – and it's crazy because then you guys are getting good response to it. Yeah, And yeah. That, that's got to feel I feel good. like Jism fishing fin- – he, like, kind of finishing up what I kind of was – well, we, we already – we got a whole new new style, but I, <laughs> he was finishing up kind of the stuff I was working with Ganja K because I, I did a lot of hooks and stuff for Ganja, uh-huh. but I then I didn't I didn't produce or I didn't have no to make beats and Ganja don't make beats, so we was just coming up with concepts. But uh, you know, after Ganja passed, and I still kicked it with Jism, and I think I feel like he's kind of like finished up whatever Ganja was trying to tell me at that time. He used to always tell me, but I don't know what I don't know what he was talking about. He used to be like, "Man, you, you, man, you got it, this and that," you know. He'd come in my room and be like, "Yo, you want to help me write some music or come up with ideas?" And we just and he always be like, "Man, he even slide me sometimes. He even give me like a hundred bucks, two hundred bucks, cause I was late on rent or whatever. He, you know, man, just help, man. Ganja, man, rest in peace of ganja. Ganja, man. Yeah, man. G- ganja K was the Jedi Master. Yeah, he That's was, what. He, in case you can't hear uh, Jism on the mic right there, but. Yeah, Ganja, uh, Ganja, like one of the first, one of the first, uh, like older people that I know that's that's been in the game that came to me like that before all these others, you know, like Sugar Freeze and all them. But he was the first one to see the vision. The, yeah. Like he he saw something in you at a young age yeah, before you even saw it in before yourself. I even saw it. Yeah, I was that, probably like that's probably like twenty one, twenty two when I was kicking with Ganja. And you know that, and that's the kind of direction we need from the OGs. And I, I like I'm one of them now too. So like I, I don't. Like, if I have a chance, like, I'm I'm not trying to steer somebody wrong, man, because, like, as OGs, I mean, I take pride in it. We we have one, sh- maybe, you know, sometimes we have one shot at this, man. Like, yeah. y- you can nice. you can change somebody's mind state just just by that little kick or that little push that you might have needed back then. And now, look, you're just making yeah. wor- constant work, bro. Just, but shout out to Ganja K. I, I wanted to say, like, I, I mean, obviously known as music and his legacy and all that, you know, um, what he's done but i i like got to meet him personally we i don't know why i was on the same panel as him bro but i'll take it but um i was we were judging something it was a it was a uh-huh. show beat battle i think it was a beat or a, it might have been a rap battle i can't remember i think it was right here at katie jakes wasn't it shay and uh oh, yeah That's and uh but i got to actually just because we had a conference and get together and like to speak on the whatever way we voted or whatever but it was a cool thing for me because I never really got to chop it up with him like that, and we and we talked the whole night. It was it was mad cool, and then, you know, it it wasn't too too long after that, you know. Yeah, he got a lot peace. of he knows a lot of people, but if uh, if you, anyone want to go back and check out like some Gonzo K work that I that I worked, I was called Gonzo K Chronicles. I actually hosted that one. I rec- I mixed it, mixed it, master, and I had to go back and take some of his old songs. I had to backtrack for him because he couldn't find it. At that time, so I had to go back and he just wrote down the songs he wanted me to go find, and I had to go to YouTube and all this stuff to uh, and put it together on his uh project, Gonzo K Chronicles, rest in peace, Gonzo. But yeah, yeah. that's like kind of like the door to open into my to my engineering skills and producer skills and working with people like Gonzo and Super Nat and all that type of stuff. And that's crazy. Yeah, he, he introduced me to people I don't even know, but then now I look at them now and I, I'm like, damn, I was chilling with legends. Like, yeah, <laughs> I was, I'm just like chilling. I don't know who they are, but yeah, he would, but he trusted some like Medusa. I'm chilling with her. I don't even know. Oh, you feel man. Me? All the kind of this weird, like, I don't even That's I'm now the fam back. right there. Yeah, I'm looking back now, like, damn, I was chilling with some people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, talented, talented uh, people. And, and the thing is, though, that's dope because he saw something obviously um in in your uh you know you what you can bring to the table your skill set and he knew that was you know it would work out and look yeah, man, back then i stopped writing too so i was already on um, learning how to whatever this thing how my gift how i do it is it's like kind of perfect it was never perfect with music but yeah. it's you know it's more confidence there and when i was doing it then i was just learning it you got it down to yeah, like i a, got it down a so little I, science yeah, knock it down i can knock a song out that's fucking that, that's Fast. dope man from working with the these legends and getting your uh, uh honing your skills and shit and now uh like i said with with the music you guys are making so uh hey jism let me ask you on on this one uh like what's it been like to go into kind of a a different realm i guess from what you're used to as far as the content you're putting out because now you're doing like 
a lot of different stuff. You'll have yes. you'll have your OG sound, then you'll you'll work with Arion, you'll work with different cats. I'm also doing different genres. That's what I'm saying. Just the traditional, well, even what we're doing I'm beyond. Doing I'm doing EDM. Yeah. I'm doing. Ha, I'm has doing that house helped music. though? Uh, also pump you up a little bit more to do music it, again, because you know, creating and challenging yourself, bro. It's opening open. It just opened up my mindset. The yeah. thing is, uh, you know, if you look at a DJ. Um, whatever dj you know some djs only dj one genre and that's all they play and that's all they do but the successful djs yeah. are unlimited yeah if you in the money making djs are unlimited you know if you if you got a dj a wedding or a party you got to play for the crowd yeah. sometimes you got to pay top 40 sometimes you got to play underground well the homie eclipse sometimes just did one where you had to pick country reggae, dance hall you know like like and you know and I don't just like one style of music. I don't just like underground hip hop. I like commercial hip hop as well. I like different MCs. I like not, and not just hip hop. I'm not just limited. I like house music. I grew up. Oh yeah, that, that was, that was part of our shit so at the we party. You know, we were going to baby doze when we weren't even yeah. old enough to drink and, and yeah. listening to house music. And I, my brother is in the cartel, and I'm considered part of the cartel, even the, which is like a house party crew that was throwing I knew a few of them back and, in the day yeah you know, like they consider me as an extended member even uh, it just you know I was DJing and I was playing hip hop but I, I loved house music from the gate you know and then that's where and the problem is hip hop spots you go to a hip hop spot and this music back then it was mostly dudes you know you go to a, a place that plays house music and it's like 70% girls. The chances mm -hmm. are better of hooking up. I love women. I love yeah. being around women. <laughs> yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I want to dance with them, yeah, too. The scent know? of a woman. So, yeah. <laughs> so I want to make music that people can dance to as well. Yeah. You know, you can break dance to the boom bap, but, you know, when it comes to the salsa and to the reggaeton, you can get busy on the dance floor with some classy moves. It's kind of like adulting, ultimately. Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm unlimited. Uh, I, I don't want to be the person that is put in the box and says, you can only do one style of music or if you do something other than boom bap you are not hip hop yeah like yeah. like people want to put labels on you mm. not the, i don't want to say names but there's a person in LA that says if you're not doing underground hip hop you shouldn't be doing anything yeah <laughs> you know and like i don't get that mindset i don't well, know, or just like that old school mindset of i'd rather be I'd rather be broke and have a whole lot of respect, which was like a bar from somebody's song that came out in the 90s. Mm. But like, I was like, yo, that don't make sense. Yeah. Like, I never wanted to be broke. Yeah. I, 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 I love to have a lot of respect. I want the best of both worlds. I want my yeah. cake and I want to eat yeah. it The too. goal is not to be yeah. broke. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to be broke and have a whole lot of respect. I want a whole lot of respect and I want some money and I want to have fun be broke. and be Shout happy out to and Strug. have a good time. Mm -hmm. I want to share. I want to, you know what I'm saying? I want to share energy. I want y'all to be rich. Yeah. I want y'all to be happy and having fun and having sex. Yeah. You know? That's the fucking, hey, that's the good old days, man. We got to get back to that mentality, man, so much stressful shit going on all the time now i think yep. you know that's all a, eagles aside uh, that's again where uh, music is so powerful because you know we go through these these times throughout history as shown but you know music's always been an escape and um yep. it, it's no different now we got a lot of stuff going on so sometimes you just need to tune out don't watch the news go listen to some good music get vibe out to some shit Music your, is therapy. Your it's favorite artist or an artist you haven't checked out. Go check out some new shit, man. That's for real. Wait, is there anything that you do? Like, because I know you're constantly working, either you're regular or with music. But do you ever get time to do anything else? Do you ever read or is there any movies or video games, anything oh, like that? I love that? watching movies. Yeah, I mean, for I, sure. Yeah, What's I've your favorite a, genre of mu uh, movie? Uh, I, 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 my, my genre is open, but uh, probably, I mean, I'm a Star Wars fan. Yeah, like, me too. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> so I like sci-fi. Oh, you see that new Obi-Wan? Uh, yeah, I watched yeah. Obi-Wan all <laughs> yeah. the way through. I yeah, watched it at too. midnight on the, on the uh, Wednesday. Yeah. Just, you know, I was waiting for it to come on. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. To avoid spoilers. You don't want to read no spoilers yeah. online, yeah. so you got to see it right away. And yeah. I actually spent time afterwards going on YouTube and watching the Easter egg people talking about all the things that I might have missed. Cause oh, yeah. Sometimes I miss little things. And I was like, oh. Well, have you seen the Clone thing. Wars cartoon series? I, I've, I've seen it, and I haven't seen it in detail, but I've actually, uh, uh, I see how it all connects. Yeah, you know? it's dope, because I, I barely caught on to that a few years ago, and it's see, dope. It's real dope. Uh, see, I'm going to have to see. I've always been watching the, Rebels and the yeah, OG Rebels. Star Wars there's, shit. There's this other one called Vision that's pretty, the Star oh, Wars Vision. Oh, it's like Vision. an anime one. Yeah, that yeah. was super dope. Yeah. See, I, I, I'm Alternate on the, the, the OG uh, shit, but, like, dog, I feel
feel like I, it'll take me down a whole another spot when I start getting on. But I think I just need to go watch one and just catch it for yeah. what it is and not try to, you know, because the best way to watch Star Wars is if because I, mean, I did back to my childhood. But the best way is to watch it from episode four five and six right then right. one two and three knowing that they're going to connect right. and then catching the rogue one and you know that's what i'm see saying chronological to order, see the spin-offs but it's better to watch yeah. it in the order they were put out yeah. the one i kind of wanted to see that i think my brother caught it though was the boba fett uh, boba fett boba one fett is dope, dope. mandalorian yeah. was dope. it starts off slow boba fett starts off slow the yeah. first two episodes and then it takes off uh, the see, mandalorian is super dope yeah, both yeah episode i mean uh season one and two they're about to come with uh, season three. Hey, anything uh-huh. else besides that, uh, like straight off of Star Wars, uh, a tight end that you could recommend? Because uh, I'm late. I got to catch up on some shit. Anything uh, with uh, movies? Yeah, anything. Like, like movies, I mean, shows, like Marvel series. Marvel, too. Like, yeah, I'm, me too. Like, Marvel, that same I'm Marvel same deep. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've he, seen the, every single one of them. Yeah. Like, he just strong. watched, what was the last one? Uh, the Oh, Doctor Strange, but that uh, uh, came out the well, last couple months ago. And then yep. the, the new Thor is coming out this week or next week yeah, or something Thor, like that. Yeah, uh, Thor, yeah, the God of Thunder, I yeah, believe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm way into to that uh, oh, yeah. Marvel movies. Well, I like that. Uh, programs. I like the influence, though, on some of your artwork when I had, you know, the one that you, you did with, uh, oh, who did it? Hex? Yeah. Uh, where you're like a superhero dude. Oh, that was like actually a, this girl that works for me. Oh. Uh, I think if you're talking about the um, oh Hex did the other artwork for Hex uh, did the artwork for me and uh, So King okay for the Triple OG LP yeah Hex killed it on that it came out super you were like a little I like a, a cyborg character yeah. cyborg b boy dude yeah, like yep, that yep. shit was tight yeah dog. with the Adidas outfit yeah that yeah, was that yeah. was dope too yeah that's actually a, a stormtrooper actually shout to the hip hop stormtrooper it's kind of like a, a a vibe off of the hip hop stormtrooper. That's and dope. of course, Luke Skywalker and uh, Han Solo, when when they when they had to get in disguise. And oh yeah, say I Prin- remember that. Say that Princess Leia, was uh, dope. Uh, uh, New Hope. It, 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 uh, that's fucking dope. The the influence though that that ties into your artwork too. But um, you know, um, one th- one thing I wanted to add on though, I think uh, as at a certain point, like you've done your shit. Like you're as an established MC. People know that. You can get on the stage and rock with anybody like you could freestyle, you could write, you could produce, you know, all these things. And I think um, maybe sometimes it takes up because the way hip hop is kind of like gauge, especially coming from our era, you know, it's on that competition. And like you said, some cats are just on that only underground hip hop shit. But I think when you get to a point like you have and you're kind of, you know, you're well established in what you do. It, 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 I mean, it's okay, dog. You, you're confident enough to rock any genre, but you, you gotta go. I, I feel like it, dude. You gotta go, you know, experimenting with the different music and different sounds, and, um, and especially a different audience. Yep. You get can't, a whole can't be limited. different gotta families. Unlimit. Gotta, yeah. unlim- gotta unlimit yourselves. Yeah. We did this show in Santa Monica, me and Arion, uh, thrown by a conclusion, and we rocked this song called So Fuego. We came off of stage. We while we were brought, while we were performing this song, this is the first time we ever performed it. Ten to twelve people in the crowd, not just rocking with us, we're dancing. Yeah, with, with it, right. So right as we get off the stage, these girls are coming up to us with their boyfriends, yeah. not jocking us, yeah. but coming up to us saying, "Your guys' music was with the respect, best." Respect, yeah. It makes this, all this other stuff sound like garbage. They said it like that, and we're like, "Whoa." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's something to say. It was a white white girl with her boyfriend. She wasn't jocking us to try to hook up or nothing. Yeah, she was really just giving an honest opinion of how the music made them feel. So uh, yeah, it is opening us to different ears and and, and opening me to a different ear, different crowd, um, and uh, a different energy. And that's really the energy I've been looking through for all of this music all throughout and i really think that one of these joints are really going to break through one of these projects is going to break through and bring attention to everything so um you know i'm at the point of not being in the box growing and unlimiting myself not not following the limitations that the world wants to put on me or all the haters they love to hate you know he he, he has a super dope song that they played outside and he was telling me that his sister said that's that's not dope, and I was like, "Are you kidding me?" That's a hit. Yeah. <laughs> like the song he just played right now was a was a stray hit. But there's people out there that they they rather hate than than yeah. show appreciation. You get more love and appreciation from people you don't know than you. Oh yeah, that's real. 
right? You know, well, that's the realest shit it, right there. And it's like it's they might hear that same type of song from some, but they might, if it's somebody else, they're going to give it props. But yeah. For some reason, yeah. if it's you, that it's not going to get it. Like a, yeah. yeah. And, it, and it's almost like pe- cats sometimes feel like they know you too much where they, they feel like, oh, I can't let him think that, you know, like yeah. I'm giving him props for something like because he's never known me to do that. Yeah, but if something's dope, just say it. Yeah. Like I, I don't I don't get people with, you know, uh, afraid to give compliment type of mentality. You know what I mean? I go anywhere. If I see something dope, hear something dope, if they're right there, I'm going to tell them it's dope <laughs> to a, a me. A huge compliment that I remember, we were in Vegas with Soul King and we were in the studio with um, the alcoholics. Who was it? it was uh, E. Swift. Uh-huh. And, you know, we asked him if we can play a couple songs just to play them, to show him that we're doing a little something different. In the middle of playing one of the songs, he played it, stopped it, played it from the beginning and again, stopped it, and looked at us and said, this is a hit. Yeah, this is it. That was the Mama Sita joint. You remember we, we, were, we were over there with E. Swift. And to have E. Swift, someone to me that's like a super legend. Oh, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like, I was happy just to be there in the studio with, with him and, and So King and... You know, I'm a big time Alcoholics fan and honored to be able to have songs with them as well. But, you know, to ha- stop that and say that voluntarily with, you know, was was big to me. I got to ho- ho- I, I got to yeah. host a couple of their yeah. their shows, bro. And, uh, and you know, the com- the com- uh, the camaraderie with those guys like the anniversary. I- show. I've kicked it with all of them at separate times, but then all of them together also. Yep. But dog, man. Yeah. He's Swift. He's cool. As my, and you reminded me, man, I owe him a. I, I gotta send him. I was gonna send him a DJ shirt. I gotta. I owe him a package, man. But oh. yeah, but he's Swift. He's uh, he's Swift, he, man. good conversation with that guy genuine too. Genuine dude. Yeah, genuine. You know, they all are. Hey, let me ask you this, man. We're we're gonna you know tail this off. We go into the rabbit fire round at the end. Just quick questions, but yep. uh, let me ask you. You know, through all this journey you've been on, um, what is uh, what's what's wrong with rap or what's wrong with hip hop in your opinion? If um, there is anything, I mean, if you think it's the perfect, I mean, I, I have a few problems <laughs> with it, but but I still love it. But uh, well, wha- that, what do you think? That, that's a really good question. Um, there's a lot wrong, uh, but I'm not going to generalize it as hip hop uh-huh. in general. I just th- More music. think it's wrong with uh, the the individuals and in the industry, like the pay to play thing mm-hmm. is, is, is not cool. This whole uh I wouldn't say just hip hop. Like right now on Instagram, I'm getting four messages a day of saying you cannot promote this song because you don't have the ownership rights to oh, Jism High Definition <laughs> and the name of the song. And I'm like, I'm appealing it, and the song's still not not up. And I get, keep pressing appeal, and then I keep getting more emails. I, that, what's wrong is the algorithms. Mm-hmm. What's wrong is the like the the limitations that computers are trying to put on the music and people. The other things that are wrong is the violence. You know, the gun, the 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 drill is such a dope music, but. They're saying that drill music is violence, which is not. It's actually the people doing the drugs and doing the shooting and the crime. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, right and wrong. Crime is wrong. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't be doing drugs. You shouldn't be killing people. It's, yeah. it's, it's in the Bible. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it, it, um, hate <laughs> is wrong. No. That, that's right. a whole, that's a whole <laughs> like, you know, different thing you could Racism. go down because, you know, that, that and, like, it's Council like culture people well. are allowed to do whatever they want in a movie. It's it's called entertainment. But right. when you do it in a song, they want to use it against you yep. in a court of law. In a court of law now. Yeah, like what? It's kind of crazy. But sometimes people are actually admitting to the crimes that they're doing on the song. Yeah. And, and that's that's when you play yourself. Yeah. <laughs> And that's right? you know that's that's on, on another level. No, but I feel you about the like there's, there's a lot of um, especially the newer, younger artists like they're basically a whole their whole like personality and everything is based on the drugs that they do and it's kind of it's kind of influencing it's their fans too sad. much you know it's like it's very, yeah the reason i say that is because my young cousin is a rapper and wants to be a rapper he's 16 17 years old now he's been in and out of juvenile hall getting in trouble because of the music that he's listening to what they're telling him to do and he you know what they're telling him to experiment on they're promoting you know all that I don't know. I don't even know what they perk and all these, yeah. all these drugs and these kids listen. Yeah. They they're thinking that's the life, and then they start jumping on that style. Especially they want to the they want to rap about the same things that they're listening yeah. to, and it's really, in my opinion, demonic. 
and especially like in this era of social media because they, they, they start to feel like they know these artists that they listen to because they follow them and they, and they send and they them a know comment. Their life stories yeah, and know you all know, their like, beef. Uh, yep. So he's rhyming like them and rhyming about the same things they rhyme about. And I'm like, well, that's not, uh, it is your thing, but it's really not what it's about. Like, it's not about doing those crazy drugs. And you, you know, s- that's that's one of the problems. Smoke some of weed. That's it. A whole, a <laughs> whole yeah, other, weed, yeah, right. Drink, Lay back. That, chill. That's it. All that other stuff is, is a whole other road. Like to yeah. to travel down is that man is all the, you know, uh, wrong paths of Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. The the paths you take. The the thing with social media, like it's a gift and a curse, obviously, because it it it's a it's a promotion tool that we never had way back when, and and uh, but. It also gets into this zone, like my brother said, where cats feel like they know you because they can see it. And and then people share sometimes too much, you know, and then cats feel like they're, you know, part of your clique sometimes and they never even met you. You know what I mean? Or they think they can say whatever the hell they want to people online, like, uh, you know, oh, they're not going to read it. They're not going to notice it. But then you got somebody going out and killing themselves off what they read on their comments, you know. know. And then I think that's what happened with the Biggie Smalls Tupac deal, right? With that Tupac got killed by someone that was really thinking about that was on the side involved with their beef and it really wasn't direct. Right. right. Uh, that's, yeah, that, that whole shit is a whole, yeah. East Coast versus West Coast. And they made, try to make us think that East Coast hates the West Coast yeah. and try, try to promote that West Coast to hate the East Coast, but it's really not like that. I went out to East Coast and uh-huh. the, if people out here saying, oh, you shouldn't go out there because there's a lot of hate. And I'm like, I went out there and got love. Yeah. I gave my CD to the dude at the bodega and instead of just taking the CD and putting it aside, he put it on the radio and turned the radio up in the bodega. Right. And was bumping it and then he was like you know what you guys go ahead and, and i told him well, i'm from la and he's like, oh that's dope i'm happy you guys are here yeah. go ahead and grab a drink on me because they own the bodega you know and like like they don't basically, that whole thing was just per, uh, perpetuated by the media oh yeah time. because like, i you know? i've heard it from plenty I mean, of artists that, are, that there's go so many people there. on the west coast that love east coast artists yeah. and i'm one of them no. you know and i love west coast artists i'm west coast i think it Lord. works hand in hand because when they and come the when coast they come well. visit us when they come over here like they're they're cool as fuck dog we we chill and the same thing like a lot of the artists that i know that went over there they say they got nothing but love dog mm-hmm. like you go out there and you're passionate and you could spit you could you sometimes could rap, they, they get more love there than they do at their own home yeah. sometimes yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's just bad promo and bad media and it gets oversaturated in areas too so when you get somewhere else and they see oh this guy's not from here they, they might pay a little and then when they pay once they start they see what you're really about man it's cool man that's hip-hop right there hey Shay, you got any how about this one man uh uh the what is the name of the only built for cuban links or liquid swords uh only built for cuban links okay i'm on i think liquid swords on that one um that one's hard though that one's tough because some some days i'll listen to one and i'm feeling that one a little more but i don't know why liquid swords we were bumping uh, that for liquid like swords is liquid probably swords one of my is favorite Jizza, right? probably, yeah Jizza. But only built for cuban links Wait, which one was the, the that was the raekwon oh and the purple oh, that, w- that was, was ghost face right yeah oh yeah. okay I think, yeah. oh that one's your one the purple we tape was dope too <laughs> hey what you, so i got that yeah but i remember oh, only built for cuban links i was bumping that all the way through liquid, liquid swords, swords is one swords of my I favorites of all time like that's a badass album that's a dope and how about uh you have a favorite hip hop group? Um a favorite group. Mm, uh I don't know. That's a good one, man. Mine's Outcast. Outcast. That's hard cuz I have the other ones uh, follow a close second and third I and think maybe I'll, tied but I, I don't Outcast. Know, I don't know dog. what I can say is my favorite group or the album that I have memorized that I can sing along to the most is probably 1993 Far Side. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. Hey, yeah. see, they don't get mentioned enough in that conversation. Yeah, so, yeah, good, uh, good answer. Good he answer. was just—I think Fat Lip was just at the Radiotron the other day, right? Yeah, yeah performing yeah. over there. Huh? Yep, we had him here not not too long ago. But man, I'd like to get them dudes was, back over here. You know, very influenced by the far side. Yeah, man, yeah. they were on a like speaking of what we were talking about um, for West Coast, like their style was different than what was coming out at the time when they dropped. So they, they just, they made it an impact with that. It was dope, man. Yeah. I think the top five groups for that era were like, uh, far side, um, tribe called quest, De La soul, souls of mischief, freestyle fellowship. Um, 
alcoholics. I think that's six. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going <laughs> Yeah, I can't even say He's top, top five. ten now. <laughs> no, there's so many groups. Oh, uh, dude, I like dope black sheep. Groups, you know dude, it, it took the me. The black sheep album was Trust dope. me, because then I also Native have. tongues over big. I also have, like, Cypress and Psycho Cypress, Realm yeah, somewhere yeah, Cypress, in there. Dude. And then I the NWA, dog NWA, 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 Dog Pound. Uh, yeah. yeah, dog. There's so many dope groups. Dog. Even, yeah. like. Even though it wasn't both of them rapping, like even go back like Pete Rock and CL Smooth, like they yep. used to do it. It would be producer like, DJ yeah, or er, er, even er, though be a rock him. Yeah, yeah. Pete Rock rap though too. Don't Jazzy know, Jeff on the Fresh Print. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's a DJ on the rapper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or man. the slapper. Have you seen that? That meme. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> He's a DJ on the slapper. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what, you got any shit? Oh, uh, so well, I was gonna ask you DC or Marvel, but you already mentioned Marvel. Marvel, but what, yeah. uh, so that Marvel, was easy. Marvel over DC. So yeah. who's your top? I like DC. Don't get me wrong. I, you know, I grew up watching Superman, Batman. Batman. But, but yeah, who's your top? Uh, who's your top? Uh, like character in Marvel? In like, Marvel, probably like your that's hard. That's hard. That's a good one. Iron Man is 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 definitely up there just because he's a regular person yeah. that made himself a superhero. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, kind of like how Batman did uh, did himself as well. Yeah, but, he used technology uh, and money. He's a souped <laughs> up Batman. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like it's crazy because um, when I used to read comics back in the day, like I never liked Captain America. I was never into that that character. But until the movie came out, yeah, it, it's dope. The, the movie was badass. Uh, like, especially the second one, the the Winter Soldier. Yep, like, the Winter Soldier. So so it made me like become like a Captain America fan because of the way the actor played him and all that. So the, uh, Yep. I always yeah. dug Wolverine for Yeah, Wolverine yeah. was sick. Was but Spider Man was always X-Men. my top. He's on Spider-Man. his vigilante shit. Yeah. Hey, uh, fa- uh, you have a favorite fast food? Favorite fast food? Yeah. Uh, n- what do, uh, El Taco Nazo. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that could fall. Yeah, that falls in there. No, too. it's not available everywhere. Yeah. I hey, dog. Fast. I used to go there. Like besides I the tacos, there's the ceviche, uh, the tostadas de ceviche. Oh, fuck, those yeah. are bomb. Dude. Yeah, their fish tacos were bomb. Yeah, and their fish tacos. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. yeah, your fish, ta- the fish yeah, tacos. The homie man. Omar. <laughs> there, there's a spot uh, on Hacienda, um, and they, they have also shrimp tacos. Motherfuckers are dank too, man. Yeah, so that, I, I go with that. Yeah, yeah. You got any shit? I'll talk with Nazo. DJ Luman works at the one over there. In, in oh, oh, does he? That's oh, right. No. Yeah, I that's think it's in Downey or somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It's n- it's in uh, Bellflower. Okay, yeah. Yep. And uh, when I roll up in there, and sometimes I'm rolling up in there buying stuff for my for my work, and you know, it's so it's it's a cool little in between. Yeah. Everything else is going on. It's a cool little surprise to see him up there. Because hey, he's got like Luman's one of the coolest fools ever, dog. Oh, like he's, he's our brother, he's man. He's dope. you know. Been earth. our DJ here. He's doing back to basics this weekend, right? He's yeah, out there yeah. DJing. He's been playing my joints on his radio show, KPFK. Up. Yeah. I mean, it's the radio oh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the break beats and break rhymes, beats and man. Rhymes, man. Yeah. Shout out to all them. MP, Chetty, Blue Chetty. Man. Oh, yep. Doll. Shout out to the home girl, Doll man. Boy. Those are the those are the homies right there. Yeah. Yep. Hey, hey, uh, any shout outs you want to make, man, before we uh, end it, man? I think with all the artists that I mentioned, I pretty much. You, got, you nailed it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shout out everybody out. Check for the new. Jism High Definition, yeah. Arion Mosley Project, we got coming. Check for the Monstro uh, EP, the Born of Law EP produced by Jism High Definition. Jism High Definition and So King LP. Navi the North. Yeah, I got to definitely shout out this producer from Canada. Navi the North. Check for the new Jism High Definition and Navi the North album. We've been dropping singles. These songs have all been getting radio play. His it's on, That one's on straight boom bap. Uh, and, and and it's got crazy features. Big ups, Navi the North. Hey, and you know what? Big ups in general, man. Anybody um, that's just about their music and their hip hop and their ar- artistry, entertainment, especially like out of the area that that reach out to work with artists, man. Like I, that's so dope to me, man. We see a lot of producers mainly, but that they want to work with artists over here, and I like that. Uh, Connection, man, and it always and makes for some good the B-side collab. Show. Keep, Thank stay you. Stay in tune with the B side show. These dudes are on top of their game. Yeah. Every Monday, they got a new uh, a new artist, and they're breaking it down and they're digging. They're 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 getting people's mentals Thank you, to bro. help everybody elevate. And like you're it, saying, that actually a lot of collabs happen through what people discover, maybe either meeting here or seeing somebody on one of the shows. They've actually we've know, had artists yeah. collab, producers, one after another. Yeah, I, I met uh, Johnny from West Coast Creation. Oh, oh that's right, right here oh, at, at the B Side Radio that's Show. From meeting bam. him, 
he you know he connected me uh, to do a joint with Razkaz, but before the joint with Razkaz, he hooked us up with one of his producers, which is C1, yeah. who ended up producing almost the entirety of the first album with me and Soul King. That's right. All from yeah. meeting up right here at the B Side Show. We yeah. just happened to be booked we on heard the it. same night. Yeah, yeah. I never knew him before, so that's another one. Yeah. Shout outs to our, our people West at West Coast Creations, Coast man. Creations. That's the fam right there. And then man. speaking of that too, uh, you can follow us on the platforms uh, B Side Show on everything and hit the link in the bio and you can see every everywhere you can watch us and then also white label radio shout out to them download um, that app yeah, on your iphone you or your android audio on, on that app too so. and then you'll be able to tap into all our interviews here including this one which will officially air uh friday um of this upcoming week and we'll be launching all that and letting you all know you guys will see the flyer thank you guys again for coming through man this was dope and thank uh, you for everything you guys do to six elevate two the six culture. right here thank you and this like I wanted to talk about it because it's from the area, and I like to see, you know, all the talent coming from around here, man. It's dope for me. So uh, thank you again for coming through, man. Make sure you guys tap in with us, share, like, uh, tell your homies about it. It's just good conversation, good hip-hop combo without all the hibbity hoopla. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's how we do it. We'll see you on the next one. We out. Peace. Stay tuned. So. They're coming with it.